Good afternoon and welcome to Nigeria Now on Equal Television International, where we tell you what is happening presently in Nigeria as the unfold. I am Sela Elisha Dashim and I'll be doing the program alongside Rachel Tansy. Good afternoon. Afternoon, Sela. We have quite a number of very we interesting do. and juicy stories this yes. afternoon. So we'll try to invite our viewers. So please try to keep a date with us. You can drop your comment on our Facebook and YouTube and then we'll take it live. Quite a number of things are happening in Nigeria. Looking at the weeding and you can call it sweeping where we are seeing the ICPC, EFCC are actually on their foot because they are actually doing the right thing. Try to talk about sweeping corruption and then we'll see other things such as politics as well because you know the program we look at politics, education, security, and quite a number of issues on the program. And we'd like to start with the political realm. We've seen that tomorrow, finally, the Supreme Court has set a date where we will be listening to the judgment for Plateau State and Kanu State as well. We will recall that, I mean, the appeal court actually talking about Plateau State precisely. The appeal court has said that um, the winner for that election was the APC um, gubernatorial candidate who happens to be Nantawe. But then we're seeing that the present governor who was actually being given, the, who was declared the winner by INEC, also said the fact that he is not in agreement with the judgment. Therefore, he has actually appealed to the higher court, which happens to be the Supreme Court. So a number of tweets, a number of posts on Facebook, Rachel. I mean, I was going through it earlier, and then I just couldn't help but laugh. Everybody's trying to show who he is supporting yes. on this. I've seen a lot of people putting pictures, such as the red caps, signifying that of the PDP candidate who happens to be Kale. That's here at Plateau State. Yeah. And then we also go to Kanu said, you know that you've seen a number of reds talking about the NMPP and mm -hmm. then also the APC. But then beyond all of this, I mean, I think this will be a time where a lot of people actually drink water and keep cup right now because yes. we finally know who is the winner for this election. Mm -hmm. And I think it will not give room to all of these um, candidates or to actually forget about politics and then concentrate on governance. A number of things need to be done in these states. And I believe that these people just need to know they are fed as it is. We remember, I think, last week or so, we saw it on the paper where the governatorial, or we could see the governor of Plateau State, rather, Khaled, is actually calling on the Supreme Court to help him save his mandate because he believes that he was the winner. We remember that appeal court actually said the reason why he can't be was because as of the time of his um, election, they said the PDP had no structure. And that has been the word. A number of people came out as what really does it mean to actually have a structure or not to have a structure. But I believe that, that um, the Supreme Court will actually give justice because we've said this a number of times, the fact that this is the fate of the common man it or is. this is the last hope of the common man rather whereby we get to see whether it's either the PDP or the APC, or it's either the NNPP for Kanu or the APC. So our fingers are crossed. But I, I believe that this should be a time that we need to be relaxed and just let the courts do their job at this of point. Of course, Selen, we have no option at this now for us but to be relaxed and just wait. This is just one of the situations where, to me, in a lot of ways, the appeal court kind of disappointed um, Nigerians in a lot of ways based by the state level mm. first and if only a, a better verdict came out from the appeal court i believe there will be no need for, for the, the supreme, court. supreme court and a lot of people were hoping that you know what apart from pre-election issues when it comes to plateau state there haven't been any other issue regarding election to say that the present PDP candidate wasn't um, the people's choice or anything like that. And then we've seen this back and forth in other states concerning bringing pre-election issues for election issues, and we've seen the court saying, no, if this was taken to election, then it no longer stands as pre-election matter. Mm -hmm. And then we can also um, go back to other states and say, okay, you know what, for other states they have every other reason to to go further because it's more of the discrepancies during the election and let the court look at it and all of that but at the moment i think that the hope of nigerians are on the supreme court it shouldn't be like that but it's, it is what it is as it is like now that. yes and then i just hope i wish something like taking metrics of jubilation would matter when it comes to this um um, Supreme Court hearing and the mm. final verdict because the amount of jubilations you see 
in states when certain candidates were announced could tell you that the people had their choice. It's one thing for the, the election saying, okay, this is the people who the people voted for, the numbers are saying it, and then the people's reaction when the result came out, and then now for the court to say the people didn't they they actually vote properly, vote that's properly what you're saying. Exactly, so you need to ask questions, it's whose kind fault of confusing. is confusing. But mm. then whose fault is it that of we are course. in this position? Because, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not I'm comfortable with playing the blame games in this kind of thing. There is an institution that shouldn't even allow us to get to this mm. position in the pla first place. But they did. And then we have to be in this position. And we saw a lot of bragging rights from these parties, um, PDP showing um, they know better, APC, NNPP, and every other person showing that they know. We, we saw mm. um, cases like that of the SMDP, the S yes, the mm. Supreme Court saying they have no basis, therefore mm, they, they left their cases. Mm. And then now we just have to wait. We're seeing that also for Lagos. We're seeing that Abia too will know their fate and all of that. Now, I'm looking forward that for the coming by election, we will not have this kind of situation. I am looking to a better INEC because INEC is the reason we're in this position. If INEC, imagine if INEC were even to come out and say, you know what, don't take pre-election cases to the court. I don't think some of these cases will be in court right now, mm -hmm. but I'm, INEC is allowing a lot of things. And then I just hope that they will start showing themselves better in, okay, this is what we stand for, this is what should be, this is what shouldn't be, and in the first place, there shouldn't even be a petition call for certain issues because it, 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 we have passed it at this level, mm. and we are at this level now. If your case is not for this level, it shouldn't even be looked into in the first place. You know, while you were talking, Rachel, you sounded more like a cleric that is saying that does anybody against this marriage, is either you speak now or forever <laughs> remain silent. Exactly. You know, but then uh, you're, you're actually very right, Rachel, because if you look at it, it's more like punishing the people for the fault of the electoral body. Mm -hmm. You know, while you were talking, I remember last year we had a town hall meeting where we had the former INEC chairman, mm -hmm. Jega, and he, was, uh, he made mention of the fact that we need a reform in the electoral body. That's talking about INEC, whereby they are setting certain things that should be done, there are certain reforms that should be put in place, there are certain things that should be done so that we avoid like most of the things you have mentioned. Imagine where we have the fact that one of the reasons is no structure. Mm -hmm. Are you not supposed to have checked all of these parties to be sure so, that they are actually qualified yeah. to stand for election? I mean, if there was no structure, then we shouldn't be having PDP election in any state whatsoever. But we're still mm -hmm. having states that are being governed presently by PDP candidates. Yeah. So I'm just hoping that, you know, we're just like you said, the body that has been set to actually do a particular job, just do your job. You have one thing to do, conduct elections. And I'm actually scared. You made mention of the by-election. We'll be having that by February 3rd, and we're seeing that already accreditation for observers mm -hmm. is starting. I've been seeing a lot of, um, like, say, um, Post going around for people who would love to be a rock star yeah. for the election to actually go register, write a letter, submit to the INEC office, stating all of these things. But I'm just hoping that for all of this by election, the right procedures will be done because we can never get it right if we don't follow the right process. Because you cannot, when you jump a particular process, believe you me, you repeat it because the consequences will be waiting for you in front. So I'm hoping that all of these things will be rightly taken care of right now. Mm -hmm. We are looking for a due election coming up, ending of this year as well, almost October, November. So quite a number of things need to be done. We know that presently the governor of Edu, so is a PDP candidate. So we hope that you'll be able to rectify whatever the issues are. If there's any crisis in the party, they should rectify it. Yes, if there's a need for any candidate that is not qualified, I know should do their job. Dig down and know who is this person, what do you stand for, so that we don't have issues on. It's already when you're in power, begin to see issues. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things Jaga mentioned is the fact that let us have all cases being handled before we have a certificate of return being given. And I think I actually totally agree yeah. with that. Imagine if all of these court cases were done with. Imagine right now saying the fact that we are going to be bringing down Governor Abba of Kanu State and mm -hmm. saying another person should come in. Mm -hmm. It's more like embarrassing and it's disgraceful. Setbacks. So very true, yeah. Richard. So I just hope that, um, just like we rightly mentioned, 
we are hoping that there are certain lessons that this body have taken. We don't want to right. see a repetition yeah. of things that has been complained because a lot of people are saying that INEC has not really served I mean, their punishment so well. Yeah, and I mean, when it comes to INEC, I expect a better attitude from them in this election. Mm. Attitude in the case... Um, in the case that um, it's one thing for you to open portals that you want observers to come. Mm. And then there's another thing for you when these observers eventually start giving their criticism for you to accept You it. actually take because it. Because what we saw in the 2023 mm. general poll was INEC coming to tell these observers that what they observed was false. Why are you having people observe an election and then you come and tell them it's false? Mm. Then there's no need. For, if you are that perfect, you don't need observers. But then whether you want it or not, it's mandatory for observers to be there. Like you have no option but to have those observers. I'm looking forward to, um, there was nothing observers said were false. Nothing they said it was true. Because even if it didn't happen in this polling unit, it happened Happen in another polling unit. If it didn't happen in this state, it happened in another true. state. I expected INEC rather than saying it's not true and allowing opposition party that um, the election favored them to be saying that, okay, what observers are saying is not true, but for INEC to learn. It shows that um, rather than just being defensive, be in the learning position. And I feel that that attitude shows INEC is not ready to become better. But then I just hope that this time around, let them be better when mm. they are having constructive criticism coming to them they should accept it and apologize to INEC is yet to apologize to Nigeria for some of the things that they put us through and that's to tell you they don't mm -hmm. see wrong in some of the mm -hmm. I believe INEC we expect an apology apology from INEC that well, you know Richard, what one we thing are for them to apologize is another thing for them to truly show that they are sorry for True, what they, they you know it's one thing that. for you to come out and say we are sorry mm -hmm. but then are you ready to put the work you made mention of the fact that are they willing to learn and I think that's the, pro the problem we are having, whereby we don't unlearn certain things. Yeah. You are not ready to open yourself to corrections to say, you know what, I accept that we actually failed and we are planning to do better. I think Nigerians would have been satisfied with that, but then yeah. no apology, no walk towards no that. Walk towards so right now we are not going to say much. We're just going mm -hmm. to let INEC to actually show their credibility come February 3rd. Let us see how the by-elections will be conducted and then we hope every other thing will be done well. Sure. Now we know that this week has been bombarded by one weeding after another, mm -hmm. starting from that of... Um, Halima and Shehu, and then mm. we went down to the issue of the former humanitarian affairs minister that was supposed to show mm. up, and then she was not feeling fine, but later on she showed up. And then finally, we were also having that of better edu, whereby we're having the issues of there was another issue of mm -hmm. misappropriation of funds, and yeah. you just can't help but wonder I mean, what is happening to our ministers and what is happening to various. And then right now, this morning, or yesterday rather, we saw whereby the former minister of uh, power and was actually being arrested for the fact that there was an issue of a six billion dollars Mambila mm. project yeah. that was supposed to carry that they didn't carry that and this is as far as talking about during the uh, yes. administration of Obasanjo because he was a minister between 1999 to 2003 yeah. and they were having that even last year he had a little issue as well of mm -hmm. whereby he gave out a contract and then there was no even cash back, um, uh, backing or whatsoever so you begin to ask questions and you in one way you're actually applauding the president mm -hmm. applauding ICPC applauding EFCC for doing their job. We've seen IPC chairman saying that if there's a need for him to be in court, he is going to be in court. We've seen IPC also saying mm -hmm. the fact that, you know what, we've actually recovered 50 billion naira, And I'm really excited it when I see, um, you know, results coming yes. out for investigation. But then you begin to ask what really is the problem. And I know we started this conversation in the morning, the we fact did. that corruption is actually eating deeper than you can even mm -hmm. see it. Because this is something that you cannot actually place a finger and see this is the only sector that is corrupt because it's everywhere. If you are going to our educational sector, you see it there. You go to health, you see it there. Transport, you see it. Power, you see it. And a number of sectors we can mention, we are seeing corruption. But then I think it's something that we need to do collectively. It's not about saying, okay, this is the responsibility of the ICPC or this is the responsibility of EFCC. In your own position, where you are, what are we doing to fight this 
common enemy because it's common. That's the reason why we are not growing as we should. So quite a number of things, in as much as I'm having a mixed feeling, I'm happy, yes, but then mm -hmm. it just makes me realize that, you know what, there are a number of things that need to be done because there is a number of sectors that really, really need to be vented because a lot of things are happening that Nigerians are not aware of. I mean, you know, if you hear what ESCC have to say concerning the act that he went against that is um, doing a transfer, awarding a contract, transferring the money mm. um, to the company that he, they were working with at that mm. time concerning mm -hmm. the, and the, the, the power project, and then there was no budget, there was no breakdown of what was going to be used for, and then he just transferred. And I believe that it would have gone down the radar if not for the fact that in 2019 he received back another sum of money mm. coming from this company that he worked with, and then that is where the alarm started coming, and okay, why are you getting back this money from these people Enough and money. all of that? And then you will just see the organized nature of the corruption Corporate we have teams. in the exactly cooperative seller we, we just see the nature of that because in the first place um why are we having such a project so there's six um billion dollar is a lot of money it is looking at the value of our currency at that time if you are to bring that money to now we are looking at three times Four the times amount, of course. amount, yes, exactly, of what. So it is a lot of money. It is a very, very huge sum of money. I believe a money that if it was used for the right thing, it would have gone a long way in our power projects in this country. And secondly, we are also seeing Obama uh, saying that he's ready to speak on behalf of, of Nigeria course, he's because who gave him the authority to mm. Award such amount of contract at that time and all of that. So I'm seeing a president, uh, a former president, trying to say he wasn't even aware of, of that, of of that kind of transaction, which, of course, I mean, I don't believe it, but we can leave that topic for another day. It's too big of a money for a president to say he wasn't aware that his minister awarded such a contract. But we can leave that argument for another day and just let's just focus on what is happening. And then... I want Nigerians to be optimistic concerning what is happening because I know we have a lot of uh, mixed feeling that, you know what, um, this is just a charade that the real people that the government is supposed mm. to be going Go after are not going after. Mm. And then it is, it, 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 we, you can't be in a country. I know a lot is happening. And it looks like yeah, it's not that a hopeful situation like that. But you can't be in a country and not be hopeful, even if it looks like nothing is working. Some things are working. It might be little, but some things are working. And then we have to hope that more will work. I'm looking at a situation where if we're able to get answers from this, then we can start pointing fingers mm. to the current administration and then the administration before the current administration because this kind of transaction has been going on for long where money is just being transferred without budget, without approval, without breakdown of what is going to be used. There are a lot of those kind of um, transactions. Transaction going we, on. we see that even happening. We just see our senators sitting down and saying, okay, let's talk about the SUV. Were there not other options? What was the quotation they used to get the 155 million per SUV? There was no appropriate breakdown. Okay, how much for shipping? How much for, I mean, border excise duty and all, all of that? that. Clearance you understand? And, and the real that. value of the money in the market, if I'm going to ask, is it that amount? We, when you look at it, these are the things that are happening. And it's wanting to point fingers and the rest are coming back to you. So if this should be successful, it means we have many other cases to look in that are quite similar that we are having our leaders doing the same thing as it is now. So yes, it is a good thing in the right direction. But I just hope that the president is brave enough to do it for everybody. Mm. Not, don't be selective in, the, of in your anti-graph mm. fight. It should be for everybody because that's the only way we can become better. You know, Rachel, why you're saying it, I mean, it looks as if sometimes it looks as if it's selective. Mm -hmm. Some people are being pulled and then other people are getting away with it. I clearly remember during the time of Buhari whereby he made a statement that if you want your sins to be forgiven, you should go to APC. Mm -hmm. Possibly he actually meant something different, but it was taken out of context from what he actually meant. A lot of people feel that, you know what, if you were one time a thief or if you were actually mm -hmm. um, very bad leader, the moment you are in this particular party, you have a covering and then 
people won't come or EFCC or ICPC won't come after you. But if we really want growth, as we are actually striving for every day, every morning you wake up to one sad news after another, and just like you made mention, make you look at it, nothing is working in this country. Already we are seeing complaints coming from manufacturers that, you know what, the first half of this is going to be a tough one. Mm -hmm. I went to look at what World Bank is saying and you were talking about the global unemployment. Yeah. All of this money that we're talking about, okay, presently, even manufacturers are complaining. Why? Because of power. Yes. And here is the, I mean, project that's supposed to be working. Imagine if we have that Mambila contract working, that power sector is working, functioning, mm -hmm. which will actually help to other power plants that have been going down and then today we're on 4,000 megawatts, tomorrow it's down, another time it's up mm -hmm. and you wonder what is really happening. Yeah. Or are we going to talk about the hike in the issue of the fuel? Right now you cannot, if you buy the fuel looks as if you're a rich man if you can afford to it's, it's have it's a full selling. tank in yes. your car. Because a lot of people you just put 3,000 naira, go there and you then you're very convert. sure. You just you get the way. your move. That is how bad the situation <laughs> is, is that in bad Nigeria thing. presently. Yeah. So we just hope, I mean, I remember in the morning we had a caller that made mention of the fact that even the present Senate president is having question mark, question so. mark on his head. And then we are looking forward to where the president will say, regardless of who mm -hmm. you are, even though I know they have these... Um, what do you call it? They just have this immunity. That's yeah. the word. They have this immunity that while they're in office, there are certain things. But I remember when the EFCC say, once you're out of office, we'll come after you. And we're seeing them. They're coming after them. The minister was not being pro in the office, the yeah. former uh, humanitarian affair. But immediately she's out of office. They're after her. So we are just hoping that, just like you mentioned, it's not about you, you, you. But mm -hmm. let's see everybody will everybody. be pro. Believe you me, Richard, I'm having this feeling that because of what is happening, a lot of ministries will go back and check their books. They will. We'll be having a lot of auditing. A lot of people come out. In fact, it will go to as low as even 1,000 naira that was not supposed to we be. How did it get to that? We're looking forward to that kind of yes. government that you know what, regardless of how little it looks, because sometimes it looks at it, I mean, how much is it? But every penny counts mm -hmm. when you talk about development in Nigeria. Look at our roots. We're looking at the issue of Robin is back in Abuja, Kaduna route, so kidnappers are there. Mm -hmm. Always look at the FCM, the, uh, um, the FCT. Whereby right now it looks as if even to go to your neighbor's house is a problem. Why? Because kidnappers are everywhere. So we are looking at where the EFCC will do their job. And we are yeah. happy that they are actually doing yeah. it. Believe you me, they will come. A lot of people will be angry with them. But I remember during the screening of the EFCC chairman, he made mention that you know, regardless of who you are, mm -hmm. we are coming for you. And I remember him having a little conflict with the Senate mm -hmm. president. And he said, regardless of how high and mighty. But that is it. The rule of law needs to take its place. Yes. Nobody is above the law because the law has not been set by man. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to govern everybody. So we hope to see that being so. done eventually, yeah. Rachel. Well, I think that's how far we can go this afternoon. Thank you so You're much for doing this me and thank you also to our viewers for keeping the day readers on the program see you tomorrow and have a blessed day ahead